Welcome to Skill Builder, I'm Robin Clevett. Milwaukee, among others, are really pushing cordless power tool technology. I'm here in Dublin to have a look at just how far they've come. Now it's a little bit chilly out here, so let's go inside and have a good look. So you may have noticed that Roger's not here. Well, he's had a really tough couple of months of it making the bathroom series and he really needed a rest. So, well, where is he? Where are you, Roger? Hello, Robin. Hello, Dylan. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in sunny Dublin, but I'm out here in Thailand doing a little bit of research for Skill Builder. I'm on the trail of a few dodgy builders who have retired out here, taking the sunny life a couple of plumbers as well than I know, so I'm going to be tracking those down in the interest of journalistic research while you guys carry on testing tools in Dublin. Sometimes you get the good gig, sometimes you get the bad gig. Anyway, I'm off to do a bit more work. See you guys. As part of the high output system, we got a chop saw here. So um, I like to always test my chop saws by putting a double compound miter on so it's a little bit like a jack rafter end cut. I always find it tests a couple of things. First of all, when everything's tipped over and it's coming around the wrong way, you're cutting through the, the board. I've got a bit of block board here, which is another good thing to try and cut through because the grains go in all different directions. So we're gonna put a compound cut through that and I'll know straight away by feeling how that feels because we've got a high output battery just to see what that's like, say against the corded version. So let's give that a little go. So that's a nice, nice cut. You'd expect that, it's brand new. And there we go. That's a nice, neat, tidy joint. So let's set it back up square, easy. Pull this back round. Put these little devices back on. I like this little groove here, by the way. Drop that in there. Let's see how square it is. So a good way of checking your saw for square straight away is cut yourself, cut yourself a little bit off the end. Run the saw down, turn it over against the fence. So straight away, you can see how square that is. So you'd expect that, but just because um, if anyone's um, watching this who's got their own chop saw, who's bought a chop saw, maybe they've been given a chop saw by someone, it's always good to check that everything is at 90 degrees to one another because when they get moved around in transit, sometimes you need to kind of fine tune them. Right, let's move on to some of the other high output tools. So another tool in the high output range is the table saw. Now this is a battery table saw. I've been lucky enough to have one of these on site with me for a couple of months. And actually, I don't really ever want to get my corded one out because it's lighter, but it does the same stuff. It will still do a similar width of cut. Does half a sheet apply? You know, you pull that out there to the extension, you can get 600 millimeters into it, especially when you move the this over, you go onto the different scale. So it's a really good bit of kit. I'm gonna run it up for you. It's actually on a dust extractor here. I like the old push stick. And what I like about that, it's always right there, right next to the fence. Which is really useful. Because anyone who knows anything about using woodworking machinery is that there are rules and, and sort of even laws, if you like, about health and safety. And one of the things we were taught at college was you've always got to keep your hands out of the way of the cutting edge, of course. And in the case of a table saw, it's 300 millimeters. So you'll roughly see that the length of a push stick from there to there is roughly 300 millimeters. So the idea is, if you're set up and you've got a good riving knife, you've got a good fence, you're not trying to push through anything which has got a bad edge, you can safely feed this material through, push it with the push stick, and away you go. So I'm gonna put the dust extraction on. So it's a burn free cut. It's got, if I just show you, 
This is a nice feature. You see how you can interchange, you can take this riving knife out, which has got the actual sort of guard on it, and you can replace it. But what's really good about that is it's so easy. It's got a clamp system in here. It's a simple sort of tongue and groove. You locate that, and you pull down the clamp. And it's really quite useful, that. So there's a couple of other items in the high output 18 volt range. So we've got this circular saw here, which is really robust, 190 mil blade on that. So this is the 12 amp hour high output battery. There's also a three amp hour high output battery as well. So um, that's what you need to use with these tools. And this is the super sawzall. And if you want to see what this is capable of, watch this. So I'm lucky enough to have Christian here from Milwaukee. Christian, good nice to meet you. Robin. And he's gonna sort of take me through it. Obviously for insurance purposes, I probably won't be able to pick it up and use it. But Christian's gonna take me through it. First of all, a little bit of an intro is a lot of my work revolves around heavy timber construction. And that involves alterations and all sorts. So often we find ourselves, because of the weather, working undercover on an existing roof structure. So it's all covered up. We've not got any fresh air coming through and we need to take out large sections. And we sometimes do that with a chainsaw a petrol chainsaw. So all the other problems associated with a petrol chainsaw are it's, flamm it's really flammable, it's dangerous, the fumes, um, you've got to get the thing running, put it to one side, it's jumping all around. So obviously if you can pick up an 18 volt tool, just pull the trigger and away you go. When we are testing it, we had far more power than the petrol one. The reason for that is we have more torque. So if we go into the wood, we keep our speed and can cut fast. One big, uh, oh, one good example for that chainsaw was when I did the license, we had fresh wood fr uh, from the forest yeah. and we could do even plunge cut through that, that size really? of wood. Yeah, that was pretty impressive for me. So one thing I noticed is obviously the, the chain and the blade is, is really quite thin, isn't it? Yes. So it's, and that's quite alien. If you look at, uh, if I pick up my chainsaw, it's, it's probably a quarter of an inch. And this is, this is a little bit on the thinner side. That's obviously because that helps with the power delivery and everything else. Roger's actually had a go at this saw. Uh, he took it with a 12 amp power battery. He had a pile of logs and he kindly cut them all up for me. He said, I'll do it until the battery runs out. The way that this works, the only reason it can work really, is because Milwaukee has produced these massive, high demand, high capacity batteries. Now, these are still running on 18 volts, but as you can see here, we've got 12 amp hours, which is absolutely unprecedented. They're actually using a larger cell as well, and they've been redesigned so that they will take those high draw things. So they're good for things like angle grinders, they're good for circular saws, we've used it in their large recip saw, and now we're gonna give it a go in their chainsaw. Now the chainsaw obviously is electric, I filled it up with some oil because you need oil to lubricate the chain as anybody would know and you also need some safety gear when you're using a chainsaw. I've used the chainsaw for years, got a little bit complacent with it and when I'm talking to tree surgeons and so on they've all had an accident at one time or another. It really seems that the more familiar you get with a chainsaw, the more chances you take. So if you're gonna have an accident with a chainsaw, it might not be at the beginning of your career, but it might be at the end. So high time I invested what amounted to 70 quid to get myself kitted out with some chainsaw trousers, the visor, 
and the, the helmet and also a pair of gloves. And the idea of these is that they won't actually stop the chain from cutting through the fabric, but when they cut through the fabric, there's a filling in there which gets into the chain and clogs it up to stop it. So hopefully the chain will stop spinning before it reaches your flesh, or at least if it reaches your flesh, it might not reach your bone. What a gruesome thought. Anyway, I'm gonna give this little baby a run through. I've been charging the battery up, so it's got a full capacity on it. Now we're ready to go. It. That's my lot. That was one charge of battery. It took me what less than an hour to do it, and uh, I reckon that's pretty good myself. The fact that you don't have that pollution, you don't have that noise, you haven't got to worry about filling up with petrol because uh, chainsaws do tend to use an awful lot of fuel, really, considering the size of our engine. I reckon, yeah, I I'm very, very impressed with it. We've got some um, standard sort of construction softwood. These are all 100 by 100, so it's the equivalent of 200 square um, millimeters round, if you like, sort of eight, eight by eight or four, four by fours. And he's gonna cut through them for us. It's really quiet, I'll give him that. It's a really, really quiet uh, saw, which is, makes a lot of difference. Let me fill out what heavy it is. So how many kilos is it with the battery? It's with the battery 6.4 kilogram. So 6.4 kilos is exactly the same weight as my large corded circular saw, my nine inch circular saw. Um, so it's the same weight as what I'm used to. If you want to save a bit of weight, you could take a smaller battery. For example, one of our new 5.5 uh, amp batteries. The power will stay the same just the running time goes yeah. down a bit. Christian, I think that was really helpful, mate. Thank I'll you. probably catch you around. You're See you welcome. soon. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and join us again soon because we've got some more Milwaukee products to show you.